How's it going guys and welcome back to my channel and today we are going to go over a rumor that has surfaced about Helldivers 2 coming to Xbox plus some updates from Arrowhead regarding the major order we're currently battling against. But before we do start if you enjoy these kinds of videos hit that like button and if you are new here don't forget to subscribe. So first up we've got the Xbox rumors. Now Helldivers 2 has been a massive success performing extremely well on PC and PS5 with Xbox players watching from the sidelines whilst we all deliver democracy across the galaxy. But this actually might change according to a recent podcast. We have claims saying Sony are in early discussions to bring Helldivers 2 to Xbox. Nick Baker, or Special Nick as he's known by, is a host on the Xbox era podcast and he was speaking on the latest episode saying this. We know that PlayStation has a new CEO at the moment, and I think the new CEO might be more open to certain things. And what I've heard is that there may be some very, very early preliminary discussions about the possibility of Helldivers 2 coming to Xbox. Now, this isn't confirmation, of course, that this is happening, but merely a rumor. And I have to say on the podcast, Nick did stress this. But I can't help but hope that this will happen sometime in the future. Jim Ryan never really seemed like he wanted a working relationship with Xbox, but as Nick says, the new CEO is a bit more lenient when it comes to that, and with the popularity of Helldivers 2, that would only increase revenues with a bigger audience, which is great for Sony, but more importantly, bringing the gaming community together and increase the popularity of the game, and with more revenue, we could get bigger and better updates, and Arrowhead could maybe invest more into their infrastructure. Obviously, Phil Spencer would absolutely love this as he was quoted saying back in February, not exactly sure who it helps in the industry by Helldivers 2 not being on Xbox, and he is absolutely right. Arrowhead frontman Palstead has said on numerous occasions that they're in an independent studio, reiterating they are not for sale, and I'm sure he would welcome another player base jumping into the action. I know the waters are still very muddy when discussing exclusives, but personally, I don't like them, I never had, and as an avid player of the game, having more divers to play with and new people coming into the game just keeps the game in a really healthy state for much longer. These rumours should excite all of us who play and enjoy the game, but they are just rumours, so at the minute, really do take them with a pinch of salt, but I do believe the guys over on Xbox era have got some previous with getting things right in the past. Fingers crossed, this is true though, and talks are at an early stage and hopefully soon we can welcome the Xbox family into Helldivers 2. Let me know what you think of this down in the comments below guys. So now we're going to move on to some updates about the major order. So on Friday we got the new major order and had to liberate and defend 10 planets but we had some updates as well. So over on Discord Spitz said this, updates from Joel himself. Capturing Martel will not automatically end the Sharon defense event. The system does not work that way but Joel can award the win manually, and if the Martel Gambit is successful, he will honor that commitment by granting the win on Sharon. Our galactic war systems are meant to work that way, but don't have that functionality yet. And so a lot of it has to be done manually, and as such is a bit inconsistent. Since things like the Martel Gambit are meant to be possible automatically, if we ever do pull off something like this in the future where we cut off an enemy planet by capturing the attack attached planets, ping me or DM me to let me know, and I'll pass on to Joel so we can make the system adjustments manual manually. Stuff like this should be considered, but won't be unless one of our teams notices it. So that cleared some bits up for us there. It's all to do with the supply lines though, guys. And Martel is before Sharon Prime. So if we took that, then the bots can't theoretically take Sharon. So obviously that just clears that up a little bit. But after that, players noticed no progress was being made. And yesterday we got an update from Spitz again saying good morning divers during the ongoing attack on vernon wells the automaton horde have managed to knock out long-range communication arrays allowing us to track our forces across the galaxy this means that unfortunately we will be unable to provide updates to liberation percentage and ongoing galactic war progress for the foreseeable future super earth high command have dispatched expert caaf engineering teams under the protection of our Helldivers to repair these arrays as soon as possible. In the meantime, errors and incomplete data may be displayed on destroyer systems and tracking software continue to fight. So no progress was being counted, but today we did get this update from Twinbeard. Helldivers, the galactic war and liberation process is up and running again. We're awaiting possibly more detailed information, but for now we have a go for liberation. So things are working again, and as we can see, the major order is in full swing, and we might actually do it. So as we can see, the Hydra sector is nearly done with the Vendin Vernon Wells at the minute. 
If we move up here to the Le Sale sector, we are currently liberating Lisath, nearly done on Short Bay and Chuhi as well. And if we move along here, Marta Bay is done. Martel is kind of done. That just goes back to what we've said there with what Joel said. Sharon Prime is 42% liberated, but I believe that will get done. Marfark is 45% liberated. And then if we come over here, I think we're going to be all right, especially with the Terminus section, the Draco sector and Mirren sector. Lestrade sector's done. So if we just click here, we're defending Fori Prime at the minute. Crimsica and Estanu are done. We've got Hellmire getting liberated currently. I played no part in that planet because I don't like it. And then we've got O'Shawn being liberated as well. So I'm sure we're going to be absolutely fine. And for those of you that might not know, there is an actual Hell Divers companion app. It's helldiverscompanion.com. You can download it on your phone. You can bookmark it if you need to. It's a really good source for major orders. It can keep you up to date, like you can see here, what we're liberating or defending. And you've even got a little map icon and it shows you all the supply lines. I know this isn't in game right now, and so it can be a bit of a pinch point within the community, but it's something worth to know. So shout out to the guys over on Hell Divers 2 Companion app for this. It's a really handy tool to have. If you're not playing, you can keep updated. Or if you are playing, you can just get it open and you can start seeing where supply lines are and maybe thinking, right, I'm going to go for this planet first. Just a little shout out to them. Definitely an app worth having on you. And to finish this off, we got a cool concept by a Redditor called Pengu. They do a lot of these and they're actually really, really good. So this one is about a new mission type and this would be an underground mission. And I think it's really cool. So the gameplay mechanic is dual carry. Dual carry objectives involve a payload that is designed to be carried by two Helldivers. Although the payload can be carried individually, a solo player will be unable to use sidearms and suffer a stamina penalty. While being carried by two players, each is limited to their sidearm and Helldiver movement is limited to within range of the other unless the payload is dropped and the actual mission plant subterrain nuke on the right hand side is collect the ordnance and carry it to the underground detonation point. Then underneath that, hell divers must secure the payload before carrying it to the underground destination. Although the terrain functions as a conventional above ground map, there is a small segment of cavern. The underground drop point is located at the end of this rocky passage. Given the orbital nature of hell pods, stratagems cannot be used underground, strengthening reliance on supply stratagems and team composition. The cavern is wide enough to support four player combat and short enough that it does not overstay its welcome. Once the drop point is reached, the payload must be armed, giving Hell Divers two minutes to escape the cave. Escape is optional to the success of the mission. I think this is really cool. I hope Arrowhead can actually take some of these in the future and put these in the game. A lot more mission diversity would be much needed right now. Let me know what you make of these down in the comment section below. But guys, that is the end of the video. If you've stuck towards the end, thank you very much. Please consider hitting the like button as well because it helps the video and the channel out massively. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And as always, take care and I'll see you on the next video, divers.